but that is a like don't learn that from youtube that's not a that's don't we're not <laughs> that's not an atom that's not <laughs> chlorophyll atom i understand basic chemistry i promise all right hit me producer pots Okay, everyone on social media, again, is always talking about these different forms of magnesium we need to supplement with. But I know from learning from you about Nutrivore that we should focus on getting all of our nutrients from the foods we eat. So I guess my question is, do we actually need a magnesium supplement or can we get enough from food? Yeah, magnesium is one of the most common dietary shortfalls. It's in the top 10 most common dietary shortfalls, the top 10 that half or more of Americans are not getting enough magnesium from their diets. If I remember correctly, it's something like 65% of Americans don't get enough magnesium from oh, wow. the foods they eat. So it's not like potassium levels where it's nearly 98%, but it's, you know, it's more than half. It's, it's, a, it's a big challenge. And magnesium is required as what's called a cofactor, which means it is necessary for like uh, an enzyme to do its job to make a chemical reaction happen in the body. So it's necessary for like over 300 enzymes to do their job and a lot of enzymes that are important for metabolism. So like how we use energy and not getting enough magnesium increases risk of cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes, osteoporosis, because magnesium also has a structural role in uh, bones. Uh, it can also, not getting enough magnesium has also been strongly associated with uh, increased migraine frequency and severity. So like getting enough magnesium, incredibly important. Um, magnesium is the middle of a chlorophyll molecule. So chlorophyll actually, fun fact, chlorophyll molecularly. So chlorophyll is the thing in plants that photosynthesizes so that it, it takes energy from the sun and turns that into chemical energy, right? It turns it into sugar for the for the plants to use. And it is the molecule itself is really, really similar to a molecule in our bodies called heme, which has an iron in the middle instead of a magnesium in the middle. And heme is the the thing that hemoglobin is made out of. So heme is really important for transporting oxygen and uh, getting oxygen to our tissues and getting carbon dioxide as a the end product of cellular respiration out of our bodies. So both really interesting molecules that have roles in uh, how we're using uh, how we're how we're using energy, right? So one is helping with photosynthesis and then one is helping with oxygen transport. Uh, and the difference is chlorophyll has magnesium in the middle and heme has iron in the middle. So because magnesium is the middle of a chlorophyll molecule, and chlorophyll is the, the green thing in, in leaves that photosynthesize, green vegetables, especially leafy vegetables, tend to be what our best food sources of magnesium. Some other really good sources include legumes. So especially soy and soy products are really high in magnesium and cocoa powder, which uh, also comes from like the seeds inside a, well, in that case, like a giant pod. Um, also really high in magnesium and we can get some from molasses. So that's another fun source of magnesium. So like, is it possible to get enough magnesium from foods? Funnily enough, there's very, very few foods that have like over half of the daily value per serving. I think the only one is mature soybeans, which is not, soybeans aren't tip commonly consumed in that form. So we need to be picking more like magnesium rich foods that are going to have more like 10 or 20% of the daily value per serving and, and sprinkle those out throughout the day. So like but, a nice green smoothie with like some cocoa powder. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, yeah. cool. We can do that for sure. I mean, just eating, eating enough vegetables. So hitting the recommended five servings of vegetables per day incorporating legumes into the regular diet. Um, definitely, you know, cho dark chocolate or cocoa powder is going to be a, a good source of magnesium as well. Um, just, but just hitting, like just making sure that we're getting vegetables and legumes into our diet regularly is going to make it pretty easy to get enough magnesium. Awesome. So where can someone, if they want to nerd out and learn even more about magnesium, is there a place that they can go to do that? 
Yeah, I definitely think that if you want to dive dive deep into <laughs> nutrients and what they do in the body and what foods are the best sources, the best place to learn about nutrients is my website, Nutrivore.com. So every nutrient has these really detailed articles that explain the biological rules of that nutrient. So what is it actually used for biochemically in our bodies? And then all of the different health conditions that not getting enough of that nutrient is associated with. And then best food sources and also like recommended dietary intakes. So for magnesium, it's 310 milligrams per day for adult females and 400 milligrams per day for adult males. Fascinating for magnesium, because we're following a tangent now, is that there's no tolerable upper limit for magnesium from food. Part of that is it's it's really that because we don't have any foods that are like super concentrated sources of magnesium, it's really hard to overdo magnesium from food. But there is a tolerable upper limit set for magnesium in supplement form, which is 350 milligrams. And that mainly has to do with the fact that magnesium can act as a um, osmotic laxative. So it can draw water into the large intestine and um, cause GI unpleasant um, for some people. Um, there are some <laughs> forms of magnesium supplement that are better tolerated, like magnesium glycinate is, is a well-absorbed form that doesn't tend to cause as much GI issues. Um, so if your doctor recommends supplementing, magnesium glycinate is kind of like the standard go-to. Um, right. But yeah, just do know that magnesium supplements can cause... <laughs> That's another reason why you shouldn't uh, supplement just because you think you need to, right? Always yes. talk to somebody. And, yeah. and overdoing magnesium uh, can can cause issues. I mean, that's that's the other thing is um, too much magnesium supplementation. I mean, I think the the scariest thing is that it can cause um, heart arrhythmias. So um, yeah, like overdoing magnesium is is definitely something that we want to avoid. There are lots of situations, um, especially with stress related disorders, where magnesium may be beneficial. There is some in, like magnesium supplementation may be beneficial, and there right. is some research showing that it can improve sleep quality in some situations. But that is a like don't learn that from YouTube. That's not a that's don't we're not. <laughs> so talk to your doctor about talk the to magnesium. Your that's that's let's let's we'll. Food is great. We're going to stick with the greens and the cocoa powder there's, smoothies. There's, <laughs> there's no, um, it's so hard to overdo magnesium from food. That's why there's no tolerable upper limit set for magnesium from food, from only food. for magnesium from supplements. Absolutely, you can get enough magnesium from food. And those are really healthy eating patterns. Like the foods that are high in magnesium are high in lots of other things that are beneficial for us. Uh, and too much magnesium from supplements uh, it can be complicated, both in terms of visiting uh, the bathroom and also in terms of heart <laughs> <laughs> rhythm. So, uh, so yeah, supplements should always be a conversation between you and your doctor and not between you and a parasocial relationship with an influencer. Thank you very much, Dr. Sarah. <laughs>